Side oh. loss. All right, all right, all right. We get the Callista for Elk. That's huge. We saw him be an absolute monster the last time around. He got that big. It got banned the next game. The Varus for the first time of the series comes out, and it is also followed by the Azir for Cream. And we saw three games on the Varus up against JDG. All were wins. Jackie Love had a great performance. So it's nice to see them lean on this, something that, that can bring pressure in the lane, but you still can fall back on. You know, we're going to see what build he ends up going. I feel like knowing Jack will want to go for that earlier aggression. You already have long range two to play around, so maybe yeah. he can end up being the poke build, but there we he's go. He's the one that got BLG. the pass. <laughs> exactly. He is one of the passes. He, we know how he's going to play early, but look at BLG Ooh. going straight towards the Talia. The Jack's there too is a flex right we've been seeing it a lot more in the jungle but when you have been it always has to be a consideration up towards that top lane so there's little things that i like to pick up on when we get shots of the players and stuff bin was the last one to walk away he got a lot of love from the coaching staff as he was walking out to the stage they had this in their back pocket they're saying bin is the one to carry us to victory that side lane with elk at his heels on the callista it is the poppy that finally makes it through and i'll just say tian is one of the best poppies in the lpl if not the world and their, their like three-man core that they have right now is just really good. A lot of synergy together, right? The range you can play with, the peel that's coming from... I mean, hell, Varus and, and his ear bring self-peel, but now all the peel that the Poppy's bringing on top of that, the dashes, the jumps that you're denying, the Callista and the Jack. So I really like what TS have been able to put together for themselves so far and taking some key learnings from earlier in the series, banning away the Camille. They know the most deadly thing BLG can end up drafting is a composition that could just find ways to hard force from a bunch of different angles and lock down the the immobile backline, especially that Boris. See what that flexibility belies as well. It is the respect ban of the Camille as well as the Renata towards on taking away the combo of Kalista. They had to grab the Jacks over priority of that. So they're okay with what could come next. The Nico banning away a little bit of the setup that Mako could have with the Varus. And I wonder where they'll go with it. I'd kind of prefer, I was going to say, I'd prefer if they just pick Rek'Sai, even if it doesn't necessarily fit to their comp well, because it's just that generic top laner that you can put, you make sure it's going to have pressure. But now they're going to have to go with a different look. I'd really like to see Tez save support for last, because you even have some defensive options in there, uh, depending on what BLG do end up going with. So things like, the Renekton, again, being a bit higher prior. You have the Gragas, which would fit with the comp well, but they end up going with a nice all-rounder in the Cassante. But that does leave Mako with that counter pick, which I it think does. is huge for how important bot lane's been this series. He's going to have a lot of engage, I'm sure, thrown his way as well. He's going to have to get something that he can dictate the fights on. I love that we're getting the Cassante consistency in here for 369. First time we're seeing it. Also, I kind of like it in the jacks if you can play a little safer okay we get the tf locked in for blg and i think this is a nice pivot by them it looked like they were gonna like be out team fought 100 with the way the drafts are going so pivoting to having some side pressure pivoting into having some pick pressure too with the tf i think is going to give them a window to have a win condition i mean hell even that with the weaver's wall right there's a lot of opportunity to make plays if they lock this in on top of it and had that tempered fate like my god the pick potential would have been massive. They are going to end up going with something that is more mainstream, especially a pick that On is known for, but it, it, they could have gone even further down the rabbit hole, but the TF Talia should be enough. God, I love the Rakan. I highlighted it so often for On. Uh, on top of missing being so dominant on it, it feels like On has been uh, very, very good with the fluidity that this pick gives, also the mobility gives on the roams that has been an underlying current in all this mako and on having so much to say when they meet up with shun and tian there is mako's thresh yeah this is i mean this one going all the way back right yep. mako actually not really been one of the staple thresh players over the last few years you go back to the early days of mako a pick he knows and loves and i like it too right they were considering going between that or the heimer the heimer giving them more lane dominance but this gives them more flexibility they have the safety there with the lantern but now also having more engage opportunities if they get into a situation where they need to turn so i think ts in the 5v5 should be outmatched blg it is about pulling them apart with things like the Destiny the Weaver's Wall. Smaller skirmishes earlier on in the game too can work when you have the Rakan, Kalista, Talia bot side. So a lot going to be up to BLG this time around because the later it goes, Top Esports Comp looks like an impenetrable wall. Oh, and I love it. I love the spice coming into a game number five. I love that BLG have been the ones to take hold of that 
in a lot of the games of this series. They've gotten some serious respect bans from top esports along the way. And of course, we had to go to five. You hear those silver scrapes behind. The LPL deserves nothing less. The road to the Silver Dragon Cup, it's full of legacy. But we're in the here and now. Right here are two of our best early game teams in the league, if not maybe the world. Right now, there's one game separating you from an international and a grand finals appearance. For Top Esports, it would be the first time this organization has made it to MSI. And for Billy Billy, it's to assert dominance and to make it to an MSI for a second time in a row. Get up, get loud! It's game number five for BLG and Top Esports. BLG looking for that level one. We've seen them consistently try to find as well as top esports in multiple games. BLG have them been the ones on blue side to always go top. And we'll try to circle around here, but won't find anything. Meanwhile, top esports trying to get some vision on bot side of the map, Lyric. Yeah, trying. I mean, how much trying, I guess, succeeding. Leaving that vision down there. So vision will be swamped, but ooh, TS, they have a read on this. <laughs> it's a full circle. Do we just flip game number five? Uh, on a level one. I don't think that's going to be the case this time around. No, not going to end up doing it. And again, to kind of reiterate where we're at, uh, we know BLG's bot lane should be looking for aggressive trades in early 4v4s, especially. Uh, they can contend. Ooh. The lane swap comes sneaky. through, but it's it's spotted out. So they're going to know exactly what's going on. Tez Look at taking, the instant swap. Oh, yeah, taking a page from the book and BLG wanting to make sure that they get that aggressive 2v2 that they were looking for. Okay, okay, I like it. They will be spotted out themselves. They'll get the ward on the way there, though. That's actually pretty big. Jackie Love, Mako, know what's going on. NIP have run rampant around our league now, and top esports were one to assign to the doctrine. And now, look, I mean, losing out on minions, losing out on experience, too. We can see how not having a bit didn't end up killing a ward. Uh, like we saw, but I, I like this. TS, the fact that they made the plan, having the tempo, getting started in lanes first is going to give them that, that little bit of control for now. So then the next conversation becomes how do jungles utilize this? Because uh, you can talk about lane swaps all you want, but it's also about the impact that Tien can have on this poppy. And we do see opposite side starts. Ooh, Elk oh. burn his cleanse. Missing the flay there from Mako, though. So it's just the cleanse being burned. But maybe see some adaptation in jungle pathing here. Well, actually, the thing we were seeing adaptation in was potentially mid because Knight was already hovering over after he pushed out that last wave thinking, hey, do I, do I need to get involved right now with how badly this has gone? Because I think ideally you could have seen Knight opened up a lot more to move this game with the way that the matchup went. You, sh you ideally were looking to have Pryo in your 2v2 lane and you could have really just constantly comboed, make sure they're pushed in, aggress into the enemy jungle and set up for this Jax to have some dueling pressure. But... Look at Top this. esports with the heads up play prevented it from happening, and now we're able to go for the reset and They're just head, do it. head to bot. Yeah, of course, yeah. of course, just keep doing it. It helps you also just maintain tempo. You're gonna get to that bot way first. You're gonna start pushing it out. It, it's just gonna keep BLG on the back foot. And I love the communication for Top Esports here. They are constantly pinging over to Elk saying, oh, he's still there, he's still there. We can make it back bot side with even more presence. Bin is down here still. Looks like they're gonna commit to this swap or Rooney of just keeping on in the uh, 2v2, and Ben will stay here for now. I mean, let's remember, right? This is ADTF. I mean, he's functionally an AD carry, so it yeah. does make it somewhat a normal 2v2. And I like having the Kalista top because it brings us back to 2020 when the Shy just would not <laughs> let Puff play the champion despite hundreds of games on his Don't solo queue. That was a red card there. Maybe wanting that yellow card to get some CC on Jackie Love. Tian has made his way around. He has a oh. wall bang ready to go. Nice flash from Ben to get him away, but now on. Needs to find the grand entrance out of there. Really good positioning from BLG's bot side, but some big summoner spells burned. Exactly. Getting that flash, I think, is monumental. Sadly, not much you can do after that because on on the Rakan, it's just too mobile. It's not even when he gets pushed back unless it was a full-on, you know, knockback in the wall with the CC there, not having the damage to be able to contend. Oh, oh! They're they're committing. Ooh, okay, okay. On grand entrance oh. out, but the hail of arrows. First blood for Jackie Love. 
And it has been such a pleasure to watch Jackie Love and Mako this split coming out on top once again with the aggression. I really feel like this playoff run is a great job of, of, of killing the more, you know, extreme narratives around Jackie Love's inconsistency. And it's glad to see them keep it up, even in the highest pressure game of them all. And it being started off by Mako again. What what a great addition to this spot lane. It's really, really been awesome. Because again, the thing we talked about for them was this is the first time getting a full veteran bot side for Jackie Love, and it feels like it's worked so well. They are in sync in so many of the engages in the 2v2s, and they're able to find so much pressure. That's why top esports are a second seed. And that's why they found a lot of damage dealing against some of our better teams. We're going to take a look back at that replay and exactly how it started off. I mean, on going to clear out the vision, Mako just playing in that one spot that he can't see. Great hook from him. and. Again, getting getting a veteran support, getting a world champion support alongside Jackie Love was really the key to just making the spot lane work. And hell, even Mako, I think, was a player who had stagnant times on EDG, kind of similarly to Scout with, with, with how long those guys had been on that roster. And with a new environment, I really feel like we've seen Mako flourish to split. But speaking of, he seems angling for a 3v3. They actually come in and uh, Dragon ends up going to Tien. They do end up getting the trade, though, for the first time, it feels like, in forever. So it'll be the three grubbies going over to BLG. But an early Infernal Dragon, not too shabby for TS. They're moving Shun into the enemy jungle right now to maybe press onto Tien. And right, this was originally what they were hoping for. Have this pressure on bot, send the jacks in, look for the fight. But isn't going to be able to do much with how far forward he's aggressed. We can see on the minimap, on isn't, like, shadowing in that tribe rush like supports typically do to cover for the play. But look at the map holistically, right? Bot lane now being slightly ahead in CS. Top lane, the Cassante is even because of what, what happened earlier on. They get first straight. This first like six and a half minutes really just has been totally solid for top esports. And 369 is going to be a wall in these team fights. It's going to be very difficult. There's a lot of squishy members on BLG. Yes, there's a lot of walls spacing. There is a lot of walls. Uh, but I, I think the important part is the execution bar a little bit higher, it feels like, for BLG in the way that they can enter these fights in their damage composition. Yeah, I actually think much higher is we actually get a, a spot of BLG's bot lane being able to get some plate gold in bot lane. I think this will be key to start setting up to play around them. But looking forward, I agree with the, with the bar of execution because BLG are going to rely a lot on things like the Destiny, being able to spot out where everyone is, find those avenues to the backline to be able to get the gold card potentially onto Cream or Jackie Love if the cleanse is down. Same with Knight on the Weaver's Wall. Ben. Oh, they actually find Ben. He gets out of there with the all out and right to his help is Shun369 realizing he bit off a little bit more than he could chew. The Destiny is going to be popped to maybe follow this one up over the wall. It is. He does have the yellow card coming up. He's going to go on TN. Here comes the Weaver's Wall from Knight over the wall with the seismic shot. No, 369 will just get a rock to the back and it's Knight that claims it. Like you said, 369 really regretting that all bringing him straight into his own comrade. Uh, are going to get a nice kill for that. Again, Knight, a player we, we want to see be more mobile now that he is on this Talia, getting great value out of the first Weaver's Wall of the game. That's the mobility. That's the proactivity that an MVP of our league can present and not necessarily the big focus that we would think for Knight coming into this one with the Talia. But the mobility, the ability to move into these side lanes oh so important in keeping the cohesion up for blg which has been their strong strengths you know the crazy thing is i was just watching the minimap too and knight that whole time was you know doing what you should do like just playing in fog of war down towards that that bottom half of the map but jackie the mako didn't care at all it didn't matter if knight wasn't showing they were still hitting turret in that situation feeling just incredibly confident having both sums up i mean mako still would have a lantern available and with knight not having that weaver's wall it just gives them even more freedom to play out through this 2v2 but our next question is going to be in about 58 seconds. That's when the second spawn of Grubs will be up. And BLG, you know, they're going to be interesting to try to at least get that five mark. They will have Pryo up in top. Should even potentially still have Pryo in mid. Uh, rookie getting that, uh, not Rookie, Knight getting that wave in now. Got him. See, after yesterday, after yesterday with Rookie's Talia's, now I'm associating the Talia with Rookie. Flandre with the Rex side, Rookie with the Talia. Yeah, hey, I just the thing I is, though, 
What, what I love about the LPL playoffs so far is that we have seen shades of prior teams throughout our top teams, right? Like one of the biggest things that Weibo brought to the table was they were taking shades of IG from their first round into the next round. And I think we have seen some of that adaptation from these teams and especially the likes of the TF really running rampant, things like that as well. Yeah, I mean, I'll agree. I will say, especially with these teams, we didn't get to see them till later on. So, you know, who knows? Maybe maybe IG picked it up from these teams who then other teams also picked it up to eventually lead back here. Huh? huh? Uh, you know, that's too much. Uh, that's too I much agree. We got girls on the screen anyway. <laughs> that's Wait, what, what are we learning? It's going to be not all six grubs. That's what I'm learning for BLG. They will be denied that one. So it looks like we're going to get the full on split there. There is a dragon in 45 seconds, but top esports are going to be in prime position to contest that one. And now, I mean, you have first item coming out for Bin. Static ship picked up. Destiny going to be up soon. So I'm curious if that'll be enough of a spike for BLG to, you know, want to look down towards that bot side. You can have Bin catch this wave. Next one's already coming in. Start shadowing down towards that bot lane and join in. Because for BLG, right, you have the Kalista. You have this more, more like mid-game centric composition. They definitely want to start getting these rolling right now. You need to find those item spikes as well, I think, of importance. Now that Static Shiv for Ben is there, and he has a lot of wave clear potential. BLG, they're moving on to Mako and Jackie Love. Shun's going to go for it, gets the instant flash out of Mako. Tries to get the death sentence right back, but can't do it. Dragon is up now. And you can see Ben doing exactly what we were talking about, leaning down in river, just in case anything did break through, but that isn't gonna happen. With getting the flash, it seems like they were able to just push TS away. TS do answer in mid, which, which kind of pulls BLG away from the Drake, and both teams still just sticking to this side of the map. Yeah, I'm just trying to be a bit of a shield for his bot lane and Jackie Love and Mako. Looks like things will go a little bit more quietly, and that's when you know that the pressure and the weight of this series is heavy when teams that have been fighting tooth and nail for the first 10 minutes in the game have two kills by 12 minutes i mean yeah the pressure's on right this is what matters most we are getting to lean over the drake now for ts i like the lane allocation send cream up top because he has tp to join oh they're gonna catch him. okay okay they're not gonna pull the trigger on that one dragon is already started up by top esports but they could move in hook comes in on the shun that's a chance of corruption as well they get the full lockdown he oh. makes it out alive what they actually have the back line. Oh, they get the flash play from Cream. Top Esports, they have found Elk out and caught wanting on his by himself. But 369 doesn't want to let him get out. He wants to clip those wings on that beautiful cape. He's going to see him walk forward. Grand entrance out. And that is 369 making it away. Bin in the side lane, taking something back for BLG, but they lose the second dragon. But still, like, I, I think good by BLG to end up just committing to sending Bin back up topside when he was already working his way down. You've lost out on the Drake. TS had members there first once Cream committed with the TP. So now a nice big injection of gold into Bin when, sure, he'd already been getting plates, wasn't really finding a CS advantage, but now having both even going to be a good way wow. towards his next item just able to play with so much confidence here and i talked about you know them putting a lot of eggs in the bin basket a lot of uh, hope for that when it was the jacks we thought but even more so on the tf we've seen flandre literally destroy games by himself on this pick and bin's gonna have to be big here mako starts it off exactly another another mako moment in this game right earlier the pick and bot was him this time forcing the jacks away and then cream with the tp they have the wards in place gets the push onto elk and it was planned right like they had this idea you could tell especially when they went they went for the lane swap of sending cream up top so that they were not going to let the straight go very tight knit stuff elk just trying to find the angle with that flash there too blg looking to pressure on this top side as bin will take their turret so this will be first turret of the game to blg and it's actually really big money for them. A couple plates returned, but that was all five in the top side before 14 minutes as well. Still, though, look at bot. I mean, we were down to two a second ago, but when we could clearly see the icon, uh, still going to be there now. But Jackie Love at least going to get it. Incredible Coast might be able to get this, this fourth one right before they do go down. So the gold hasn't really been outpaced. About 1K up for BLG right now, but they'll take anything that they can get. 
And that's what I want to talk about uh, a little bit more so is BLG have consistently just been looking for picks and speaking of they just completely catch again oh he still dies no mako standing there with his friend in his hands yeah still not going to be able to make it out in the end nice by blg you said they were constantly looking for picks that's what they need to do it's cleanse going to be able to save elk in the end but oh uh, the back and forth is there, but Rift Herald now going to be pick, picked up for BLG. They're they're playing a composition that, that wants to be keeping that tempo high and kind of uh, making TS play catch up. And yeah. hopefully the Herald can be a catalyst to do more of that because right now it really feels like the egg's going to be in the solo lane basket, which, you know, <laughs> Fortnite, that really has been the story, even if it hasn't been this series, right? MVP of the league. And for Ben, it's quite nice because it hasn't been a Ben meta and getting to see him hopefully step up on this TF and take over would be a huge statement in a game five. Yeah. The big names, it feels like, that take a lot of the spotlight from this BLG roster. See Ben using the Destiny on on his way. Shun surrounding Cream like a bunch of sharks. They do have teamwork on the way, at least for top esports. So BLG pull off of it. They still do have a lot of presence around this bot side, but nothing else comes of it. And that's where, you know, top esports feel pretty confident and comfortable to be taking a game late, but they have to make it there. And some safety plays might just be the case, or maybe a little bit of gold in their pocket, shoved back by Knight. I think top esports are perfectly fine with it being a much more even game. Oh, exactly. I, I think they are perfectly content with, with where they've ended up. But this is where we'll really start to see BLG able to ramp up you know being on first items we've, we've already seen even small moves there like i love blg position around bot you're pulling top esports to cover for cream which then allows a small opening of where knight can look for the angle and mid sure it didn't end up turning into anything but it, it, it's those like push and pulls that uh are going to be able to help blg get the picks that they need pull ts down to one lane you send another member somewhere else weaver's wall destiny again you have the tools to make it work but now jackie love can, can actually make it to his second item edge of night mm -hmm. in pocket it's really big and uh blg they still do have the rift herald available for them as well if they want to try to crash in one of these last remaining outer turrets for themselves and i think that's where we can kind of bring back in the conversation of what this means for both teams a single game deciding if you go to msi for the first time for top esports but also for cream making it this far make it to a finals for the first time in his career in lpl would be huge and the likes of blg setting records two splits in a row trying to maintain that dominance yeah and also just hammering home that whoever loses is not done you know they get another chance this whole <laughs> Might not have been another chance if that that set that's connected. <laughs> As, uh, yeah, they will still have the opportunity to go face JNG, but now it's all about the Shrake. No Destiny available. Uh, so no easy ability for Bin to look for a reposition because now he's on two items. And he really can be a threat. Finds yeah. a gold card, especially on the Cream. Jackie Love again has his cleanse still oh, up. They got him! That's a flash from Knight, re-engaged there as he gets Fates called on, is out of there. Elk in some trouble. Okay, he makes it out alive. BLG have to spend almost everything, but they get their support out and they don't lose anything except for the dragon to put them on their backs. But it's gonna be soul point. And again, in a straight up front to back, TES love it. They have a lot of strength in their front line as this game goes on. Oh. So now, ooh, okay, for the hold. Play mid. I, I like it. Again, trying to find a trade, they really shouldn't be able to answer you. Might someone I'd be a bit more scared for because he did have to blow his flash in the last exchange. It seems like they will just be able to get out of there just fine. And sure, the turret isn't necessarily down yet, but you know, anytime a wave comes, BLG will be able to finish this one off, get that little bit of gold, and even potentially start poking and prodding into the enemy jungle. Another death sentence lands, and the flay on top of that one. Han's gonna use his grand entrance out of that one. We did get second item completed for Jackie Love. Soon on a flank, might have the difference maker. They're waiting for the turret to go down, but he pulls his card out early. They won't end up getting any pressure over mid lane, even though they do get that outer turret here. A response not going to be there as top esports were putting presence around bot side. Yeah, and we're going to go straight into the replay here. And it's always, again, this game, it's always Mako. I guess it has to be Mako, right? It These has are only to be. like consistent form of getting onto the back line. They locked them in, but on, luckily getting saved by Elk to be able to get away there. Elk also took a bunch of damage. 
uh, getting up that close, trying to dish out some of his own. And you know, I went and I checked the data. Okay, okay. Mako, 111 games on Thresh. Yeah. 79% right. win rate. Third most played, Jeez. almost 80% win rate in his career. Span, you know, spanning all the way back to 2014. Like, this is a man who knows his champion. It's nice to see him get his hands back on it. And again, yeah. really, really be the one delivering for TS. He has been the shot caller. He has been the namesake, it feels like, in the past for EDG. And it's been a, a wonderful split to see him separate from that legacy and start to create his own new one with Top Esports. And he has been the linchpin that sets up a lot of the roaming and, and bridge building that Tien has for the team. Yeah, enables a lot of that aggression that Tien has always been known for. On the opposite side, I mean, On is on the Rakan, which has been yes. one of his big picks throughout his career, hasn't been able to find any huge, you know, impact play yet, but still BLG are 2K gold up. So a bit to play with there, but I guess the problem is you look at the state of the map, really not a whole lot of map control. Even Knight just catching waves inside that Cream is pushing in. Weaver's Wall still there and he's constantly hovering, but just no opportunity opening itself up. God, it's... I love that Nymera brought this up on the, on the cast. Enjoy these games. I know it's slow right now, but God, the tension you could cut with a butter knife in the air. It is two to two, 21 minutes in, in games that we have had insane kill differentials. Top Esports and BLG, they know this one's gonna be a long one and they're sitting in tight. Has been trying to get side lane pressure that BLG really need to get to get even more of an advantage. Yeah, shadowing the TF, trying to open up this last turret is 369 TN. There's Actually, a lot of trouble scrap. here. Like you do have a decent amount of damage. Some tankiness from 369, but the rest of top esports coming over. TP from Knight. Get an outer tower here. So a little bit of standing gold given his way. And again, they just try to pressure bot side. But the thing is, top esports, they are fine and dandy. They are waiting for this next dragon to spawn. And they have the decision making power to say, BLG, you can have that one if you want. We'll take standing gold on the map. Exactly. Cream, Cream was actually channeling his recall. But the second Knight used TP, he's like, ah, oh, you know, I could, I could stay. I could push one more. You know, <laughs> I could better, hang out here for a little bit. Better timing for a reset. You know, go back at a bit more gold in, in my pocket. So not going to have that TP to rely on now. Bin. Oh. Committing the death. One, one action. We got the ghost out of him too. Here comes the Weaver's Wall from Knight. The golden left hand BLG wants a little piece of the action here. He is getting his own action back to him. Odds now here. Enter another challenger as BLG approach with three under the sun disc. That sun's getting oh so bright. And it's BLG who use it to their advantage, taking two kills for Ben. Sadly, the Cassante just not dealing enough damage. So on could just outright ignore him and run him down. And here it is. BLG going straight for the Baron. They're pulling a play out of top esports' book. Poke from Jackie Love is big. BLG are just going to flip this one. Tien on the backside. He's a world champion. He has that namesake. He's done it in this, and he doesn't get it. Knight gets it on the exit. Yeah, Knight manages to pick it up. You actually send the Jacks flying, but not able to turn it into a Baron yourself. BLG going to be loving that one. And hell, right now. Bin really can be a menace inside. Tonight, going to be able to generate pressure. We're going to see here, trying to go for the recall, gets punished by the Destiny. Ooh. Kind of early, I think, for the Emperor's Divide to come out. Clearly not expecting uh, forces to get here so fast. Buys a bit of time, but again, the Cassante doesn't really deal enough damage. You can kite him out, and then with the quickness, I love that on commits to flash, it's like, hey, let's just get rid of cream so there's no damage to come through, and that lets them finish off 369 as well. Top Esports heard that they could just get this dragon up, and they said, nah, -uh, we want to fight. As they're going to be in a five-man stack starting this dragon, BLG trying to move through mid lane. This is soul, so you have to contest this, but look at on. He has no health bar. You've got to find backline access, but they can't do it. Shouldn't go in around the side here. Isn't going to find Cream. Dragon is now the focus for top esports lyric. Now they're trying to get it. Cream's just trying to deny entry in from Tri Brush. <laughs> but it's so Oh my tense. God, he takes so much damage. They oh, pushed him out. Oh my God, look at the wall. It's going to be stolen by BLG and Knight. The MVP of Spring just makes an MVP play. 
make sure that they deny the soul now able to pivot over towards mid with the baron i mean some nice nice pushes off hell you even look at top wave that one's going in too you could turn to that utilize that steal away all the camps blg out of nowhere just able to deny ts so much and really start ramping up this gold lead 6k it's insane and it feels so oppressive for top esports who have been so consistently good in that early game but blue side has been king and chains of corruption not gonna be anything because of the quick cleanse out of elk so resets gonna be able to come through ts gonna be able to get themselves some breathing room uh, still going to be barren for a little while longer, so we'll see if BLG really have the ability to use it with where the map states right now. You wouldn't really expect them to be able to get too much more, but I think they should be, feel be feeling incredibly good <laughs> with where they're at. Hell, we saw Bin be able to pick up his Terminus off the last yep. base, even getting some more components in there right now. So he's really going to be something 369 can't deal with. Like, look, three and a half items on the TF. One, oh, one and a half, almost two on 369 right now. There's such a disparity in that fact, but also uh, no slouch to damage, no slouch to backline access. Shouldn't on this Jax is gonna start being a problem. And I think there's a reason why Jax had been banned out in the second phase, like every single game by top esports. Now BLG looking on the side lane for 369. They'll set up some preemptive vision there. So to help them out, that turn is gonna start doing some work as that armor is doing nothing right now. 369 getting low, yellow card, and there you go. Ben gets him, and top esports have no answer. No, again, he's just too strong right now in comparison to 369. And it's kind of sad because TS had been playing solid. You know, first 10, 15 minutes of the game, and now BLG with this leader really showing that they could take over. Knight gonna be able to push in mid now. Still has that Weaver's Wall to join in after this one gets pushed. Sure, you have some decent wave clear on the side of TS. You even still have things like Tian's ult if they ever just commit to uh, too much to be able to get them out. But three items on the Talia now too. You're really getting these carries ahead. The Got the Weaver's through. Wall. Will top esports break on the back of it? Looks like a nice siege. Oh, may go. He wants to follow it up. Look at that CC. Cream, he's getting low. He goes in. Nice re-engage there by BLG. Beautiful double knock up there by On. And they are starting to put in the work. Look at the re-engage though by 369. They're under turret now. And BLG have been taking a task. Bin gets a couple back, but it doesn't matter in the end. It is a tooth and nail fight. A three for two in favor of BLG. Yeah, BLG still walk out the victors. I mean, as TS being that far down in gold, the fact that they were able to make the trade that close is something you could be happy about, but really looking to swing the game back in their favor. Now BLG are only gonna be able to keep the demolition going and getting more gold in their pocket. This BLG roster has been a sight to behold over these last two splits, breaking the LPL record for wins and having some seriously dominant times against top teams, but top esports, they find a little bit back here, but the wallets are just too big from BLG. I mean, chance of corruption's there, but I mean, look, that whole time when Kareem was trying to gear in for the shuffle, he was taking free damage the whole time, which pretty much leaves him going down. Callista gets sent out of the fight really late, so as we can see, the Varus even taking a bit, so Shunman could then follow up on it and finish it off, so yeah not you, you can you can see the angle and, and why they, they they had to go for it, right i mean they're, they're just being pressured they, yeah. they have to find any play that they could but still it felt like the positioning was in blg's favor now they move on to the map with all those strengths uh third item now completed at least for knight and elk yeah he's calling his teammates over here <laughs> You're going to join the fight, but nothing else of it. About 50 seconds for a dragon. Again, top esports want to secure that soul. There is a Baron spawning about 20 seconds, so they need to get some vision on the top side of the map. BLG are in the driver's seat. They have all the decision-making power right now. <laughs> it would be crazy if this just came down to, like, an another Baron or, or a potential dragon yes. situation, because it looks like DS at least getting the vision down. Uh, wanting to make sure they know what's going on up there. Who knows if, if BLG start to pivot down to, towards the Drake, do they get cheeky enough to look for it? They actually have a lot of time they could play with, right? Sitting on those three Drakes, so they don't really have to worry about a soul. It's a Chemtech soul anyway, so it definitely feels like uh, the threat of Elder, meaning a lot more to either side than the soul itself. And now it's about Jacula getting this poke down with the Lethality Varus. Oh, Ooh. he got it! The golden left hand of BLG, it reaches out and snatches Mako by the throat! 
Yeah, there they managed to find the pick. He goes down right in time for Drake. So you know BLG can take this one, but even Pings coming down towards top side. They're thinking about the Baron. They deny another dragon, man. It is just scale potential. Wait for the big fight and have this series decided on one big engage. Here comes the wall again. Top esports, will you be broken against it? They will not. They stand tall under the sun disc. Feeling fine, having that safety that they can lean on, but still, BLG, they have the threat. I'm a bit surprised that they aren't more willing to look up and try and force. They don't have the quickness, so that probably being what's what's stopping them from, from wanting to go for too much. That's really their big AoE tool to try to lock TES into place to get that damage down. So just taking what they can in the enemy jungle, making sure that they can reinforce their vision line and then going for some nice resets. Top Esports sticking as a big clump here. I feel like that's their saving grace. That's what we set up for them. Their team fight, their late game potential is strong. It's about positioning and a little bit of that lower bar of execution. But with BLG having such a lead, almost a 10,000 gold lead now, almost on these full item spikes for Bin, which is just insanity. They will just start up a Baron right now and force Top Esports out of their base. Yeah, man was given so much time, free time, in that top lane by himself. He is a huge threat right now. They even have the destiny to play with to see exactly flip where it. TS are to make sure that a flip doesn't flip come through. It. Okay, okay, they learned. They learned their lesson. Okay, Tien just in there. Oh, Tien, he's in the wall. He's there. It's oh, going to be secured by Cream. The one from the top. It's going to be top esports trying to get them down. Now, BLG, they are scattered, but they are not done because Ben has full health and he wants to go for it with the destiny. He is going to find a deep angle here. They actually go in. Shun is there as well. The double knockback. And there is Knight huge once again. And the MVP. A spring comes alive! Still for top esports, you get a Baron, and you only lost one more member than BLG. I think they're coming out of that a lot better than they otherwise should have. BLG will be able to get another turn off of this, but they really can't think about overstaying. You have to respect the poke that Jack can, Jackie left to put off, where we're seeing the damage now. It's four items. Oh, oh, Knight! Knight just takes Jackie Love out of the game plan! Ben takes the kill, and top esports, they've been left wanting! And now, having some death timers to play with, might be able to get an inhib off of this. They are still chasing around Tien. So we can see Knight taking inhib in, in mid. Minions in bot. You know, all right, we, we, we get to follow the whole journey through and see Tien go down. But again, the damage is being done to the base. Lasting damage in a hope of top esports making it to their first ever MSI for Cream's advantage to getting to the finals. They are one misstep away from being knocked into that lower bracket against JDG, and here's the play, Tien trying to go in. Yeah, going in, I mean, damage still going out on the Baron, but it actually ends up being the Azir to be able to pick it up. And again, he's, you know, pretty tanky, going the grass, going the build that he went. So they're able to get some nice damage down and finish off the Kalista early. The whole time, Jackie loves throwing out the arrows from the back line. And honestly, it was a nice escape. Again, it's gonna be BLG who, who are able to find more kills. I was wondering what happened to Ben. He just completely whiffed his destiny. Yeah, not, not going where he intended. But I, I think TS being able to get away with two Barons as compared to three members live on the opposite side is, probably the best they could have hoped for. Maybe one other member could have been able to escape, but still, you're stalling, buying more time for the game to go yeah. on. And the longer it goes, right, we already have people like Ben at, at full build. So we're gonna get closer to Jackie Love Cream 369 actually being able to catch up and, and present a real threat. As we can see, Ben not exactly there yet, sitting on the Seekers, but incredibly close. Just buying a little bit of time, taking scraps where you can take them because every little bit gets you back into a fighting position. Top Esports not one to shy down from that one. We have a minute till a dragon spawns. Top Esports, will they try to go to that well three times in a row? And will they come up with water or be completely famished? I'm gonna find out. Maybe, you know, maybe they're looking for something other than water. Uh, yes, you get in the well. You know, they could be, they could be fans of, of cola. They could be fans of, you know, other types of, you know, drinks that, that make you feel really good. Can we really get a cola well be... for the LPL, please? Uh, but, Mizell, that actually doesn't matter. The well is not important right now mm -hmm. because we're 20 seconds away from another Drake. 
BLG already have full control, but we are at four items on the Varus. I do got to say, Cream is pretty much gone like like the full tank uh, Azir yeah. build. So not going to be outputting the same amount of damage as, you know, a typical Azir would. But still, if the fight goes long enough, you know okay. he's going to be looking for the play on the Knight and now with the Shreema Shuffle. BLG are very split here. They could get pounced on. TS, they're going to start up the Dragon. Okay, so they have a little bit of split focus. BLG are not going to force the fight here. Knight coming over. Okay, On has a flank. Knight on the other side. Seismic shove. They don't get the dragon. It's actually secured by Jackie Love. They get the soul in the end. Destiny pop. Very split lane. But look who's ending the game. Is it going to be enough? BLG are losing their bodies here. But they have been on the flank. They have been on the Nexus. Top Esports. You got to get back. You got to save the base. Yeah, he's oh, going no. for it. No oh. way. He stops the DP! That's game over! BLG! A monstrous beast has been unleashed on Chengdu! BLG will find finals for a second spring in a row! And I present to you the boss of the LPL! Great showing by BLG in the end especially been there right again it has not been a meta for bin making his presence incredibly well known in this game five the back door being there to define the series i love that you can see some laughs on the side look at that look at TS that faces. respect yeah i mean they, they know right these two teams going hand in hand it could have gone either way in hell still a good chance we might get to see it again is now ts or not out they just dropped down to the lower bracket to have a rematch with jdg but blg you said it back to finals and once again another ticket to msi what a day and what a series cream you have to be proud of him having some key moments against one of the toughest opponents in the lpl I highlighted this man on your screen at the very beginning. I said, I felt something. I felt more pressure on his shoulders than normal. He was surrounded by coaches walking out, giving him taps on the back. It ended up being him that makes the final mark in this best of five. Bin, who had been unleashed, and Gigabin is going to be waiting in those finals. Yeah, and you know, I